Hi guys, this is Krivili again with another fountain pen review and today we are going to have a look at an Italian pen. This is my second Italian pen that I review. Uh, I've reviewed a Marte Modena Citizen recently. The Marte Modena, Modena Citizen is produced by the same company that makes that pen here and that is Marlen in Italy. Um, by the way, I've got that pen here from Iguana Cell in Spain. They sent me that pen for review. Thanks a lot to the guys at Iguana Cell. If you like that pen, if you want to pick one up for yourself, you can get it there. Um, before we dive into the pen, let's have at the look. Uh, let's have a first look at the packaging because also that packaging here is like a really interesting pen packaging, something that I've never seen before. Um, so it's a black cardboard box with a band around here. Maybe that band was even on that way around. I don't know, saying marlinpens.com. Info at marlinpens.com, the Marlin Pens logo on here. The pen is called Marlin One. Comes in a number of different colors. I got a blue one here, comes in gray, I don't know, black, green, uh, whatever. You can either check that out on the Marlin website or on the Iguana Cell website where you can get that pen. Has the Marlin Italy logo on here. Designed to be different, wow, from 1982. Um, pen model written here, Marlin One Fountain Pen in blue and fine nib. So now it gets slightly spectacular. You open up that thing here. And at the beginning, I didn't really know what to do here. I didn't really know how, how to get the pen out or where to get to the pen even until I figured out that that is somehow tucked in here like that. And once you remove this, right, I mean, that's, you know, pretty fancy packaging, if you ask me, um, you slide out a covering card pouch like this and out comes, you know, some kind of a warranty sheet. And then also there is some, I don't know, company history on there and, uh, Filling and taking care instructions and all that fancy stuff that everyone needs to know. Awesome. And then you also, which is kind of nice, get spare parts. The spare parts, thankfully, here is a couple of, now they don't come out, stuck in here. Ink cartridges, I don't know how many there are because I've filled that pen with bottled ink. I don't even get them out right now. But you see, it's ink cartridges. Now we can peek all the way through. No, two more. So yeah, four blue ink cartridges that you get with the pen, which is kind of nice. What I don't find so nice, I mean, the pen costs 60 euro. That's a really nice price for, for that pen that you get. But I think for a pen for 60 euros, it would be nice to also get a converter, you know, maybe not the ink cartridges, but a converter would be really nice. But who am I to complain? Just a pen reviewer. Let's have a look at the pen. The blue marbled one here. The others are also marbled. The other colors, gray, green, orange, red, they're all marbled. This one here has this really, really nice blue marbling going on here. Not sure how well the camera picks that up. Let's try with a white background. It was actually better before. Really nice depth to it. Some blackish parts, some dark blue parts, some light blue parts, and then also some, you know, silver glittery parts in there. I'm sure we're gonna see that a little bit better and in different angles and different, you know, lighting situations during the course of the rest of the review. The pen has a flat top, also that blue marbled material, then sort of a silver cap band around here. The clip is inserted into the cap here like that. Slightly bent curved clip flaring out down here a little bit. Very tight, very tight clip. Usable, but very tight. That won't fly out of your short pocket, even if you do a handstand. Then we have a center band here. Pen model name on it. One. Marlin. Italy. Marlin, Italy, one. And then that, 
you know, maybe that's a Marlin thing, that kind of central band decoration, because like if I remember right, the uh, Martin Modena Citizen that I recently reviewed has a similar has a similar pattern going on around there. And then you have a silver accent band back here. Um, this here is not a blind cap or something like that. You could think that that is a piston filler and that is a piston purling, turning knob, but it is not. The pen overall is a little bit thicker here and then uh, slowly tapers down towards that side. The only thing that I find a little odd about the pen design, but I also got used to it in the meanwhile a bit, but what I found a bit odd in the beginning and I may, I think I still find it a bit odd, is the proportion cap to barrel. I find that the cap is a little short for what the overall length of the barrel is, but that's just me. I find it would look nicer if like the cap would be a little longer, maybe almost halfway down the barrel, but you know, that's just a matter of personal preference, preference. so that's just me. Then it's a screw on cap. Um, and that's the only, that's now why we're at the screw on cap. That's the only thing that I don't like about the pen um, is, and maybe that is also a Marlin thing because the Marte Modena um, Citizen that I had before that is also produced by Marlin, Marlin has exactly the same thing. It takes three full turns to get the cap off. One, doesn't come off. Two, doesn't come off. Three, still doesn't come off. And a quarter. So it's like three and a quarter turns to get that cap off that does definitely does not make that pen a quick note taker it makes it impossible for the cap to accidentally come off while you have the pen in your shirt pocket or something like that so it's secure but it doesn't make the pen a quick note taker and i notice that all the time when i want to write with that pen then it takes me a little while too you know it doesn't take that long and if you write for a little bit there's of course also no problem with that, but if you sit in a meeting and you take a note and you cap and uncap the pen and all that, it might be a bit annoying. But anyway, not, not ramble about that too much. Once the cap is off, we see a very, very nice nib. It is a very nice looking nib. What I particularly enjoy about that nib design is those wide nib shoulders here. I find that looks really nice. The nib is a little bit, the nip is a little bit, you know, thin where it comes out of the grip section and then those nip shoulders come out there, like flare out like that. I really enjoy that. Uh, I have a fine nip. It comes in a number of other nip sizes as well. Then it has, says Marlin Italy F for fine, has the that uh, Marlin logo on here that we've also seen on the box. And then it has like some, a little bit, some ornaments, some scroll work on here. Very nice nib. I really enjoy all the time when I get that cap off and I look at the nib, I really enjoy that nib design. Feet down here, very pleasant nib. I was really surprised. Pen for 60 euro, really, really nice nib to write with. That's really, really nice. Um, then uh, I find also that the overall you know, aesthetics and proportions of the pen match very well. I find that the nib size, I believe this is a number five nib, the nib size very well matches the overall body proportions of the pen. Then we have a fairly short section here that, you know, tapers towards both sides and then of course flares out again towards both sides. The same nice blue marbled material on here also here. Very, very pleasant to look at. Another silver ring back here where the section screws onto the barrel. I'm only gonna unscrew that in a bit. And then those many, many threads here that make that make it take an eternity for the cup to come off. Sorry that I'm sort of on that here. Um, but you see that's something that is not really my favorite thing. Otherwise, very pleasant to hold. You won't slide down here by accident onto the nib. Um, then it's also not slippery whatsoever. It is a very nice pen to write with. I gotta say that I really enjoy writing with that pen. I really like that. Let's see if the cap posts. I've never really tried that because the pen is long enough for me. Yes, it does post. It posts even fairly securely. It gets quite long. It does get a little top heavy. Not really. I could definitely write with a pen like that, but I mean, I have slightly larger hands. Gonna do a size comparison to my standard reference pen Alami Safari in a bit, but the pen is definitely long enough for me to be written like that. 
And as said, it lays really comfortable in the hand. It is a very well balanced pen. I really enjoy writing with that pen. I can just emphasize that. Unscrew the barrel. That feels really nice. Very well machined, or not machined, molded or whatever. Um, tight tolerances here. Um, as said, I have a Jin Hao converter in here. The ink is, I don't know, yeah, it's uh, Faber-Castell Cobalt Blue that I have in here because I thought that matches the blue marbling of the pen very nice. As said, I would have found it nice. Pen for 60 euro, just throw in a converter. That could be a really nice Marlin. Please do that for other customers. Really nice pen otherwise. Size comparison. Lamy Safari, where are you? Here. Capped. The Safari is a tad longer. Uncapped. The Safari also is a tad longer. And then, yeah. Oh, some ink here. I'm not gonna post those pens because, as I said, they get fairly long. So, yeah, I mean, it's. Let's say the pen is a, is a bit shorter than a Lamy Safari. But, yeah, I mean. Comfortable to write with. I have slightly larger hands and there's no problem for me holding that pen, not lengthwise and also not when it comes to the diameter of the section. Writing sample at the end of the review. I'll zoom in a little bit. And as said, maybe I have some problems with the pen starting up right now because no, you see the pen comes up straight away. You see I had that pen uncapped for a quite long time during the course of this review and still it just starts writing straight away. This is a very pleasant steel nib to write with. It's a steel nib, if I if I for, maybe forgot saying that. Um, very pleasant to write with. So we have the Marlin 1 in blue. Fine nib. Lovely writer. Um, it's a slightly wetter nib. Faber-Castell Cobalt Blue is not the wettest of inks. But you see that? That was the cap. That is a pretty wet nib, if you ask me. It's definitely not the driest of nibs out there. So, I mean, um, I've never written with a uh, with with a Marlin Marlin pen apart from the Marte Modena Citizen produced by Marlin before. I find that nib here a lot better than the nib of the Marte Modena Citizen, to be honest. Um, for 60 euro, I think this is a really, really nice pen, apart from my annoyance of that cap taking the duration of a breakfast to come off. But otherwise, a really nice pen. I hope that review was useful. I want to thank Iguana Cell in Spain again for sending that pen for review. If you want to pick one up, get it at Iguana Cell. And otherwise, I'm glad to see you at the next review. Bye bye.